Hello and welcome to another segment with your host Sam Standing. On a bright uh, English morning. Uh, so where I'm going to try and route before it possibly rains, like most days. Um, so, yesterday we did the pit guard. It's looking nice, and I've mounted stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's um, it's pretty cool. It turned out very nice, I think. Um, but yes. So now it comes to how do you route a body? So first, as you can see, I'm on fired my guitar. Um, yeah, just wrap it in masking tape to protect it while you're scooting a router over it. And then you you want to poke some holes for the pit guard. Put the pit guard on top, obviously without the electronics in. Just draw around it um, perfectly in place. And then you get a nice line which tells you how far you can route before before someone's going to notice. Um, also, what you want to do is you can uh, pencil in these holes and then from those calculate how big or small you want your cavity. So here's my cavity for the the pickup switches. There's a little um, nick off this cavity to accommodate for the, um, the five-way switch because it's quite chunky. I've got a little nick off the cavity here for this um, two-way switch. Um, that's also just kind of part of this square cavity. Um, we've also got a cavity over here for these two switches. And um, yeah, that's very going to be very close, but we can do it. And I'm also putting a little a little channel, a very shallow channel here, just to let the wires from this pickup go to here because they're quite short. Um, after separating the coils. And yeah, that's basically how you set it out. So, um, uh, oh, the thing that kept me up at night, I woke up today at six because I realized that I had not accounted for the fact that the body is carved because none of my other guitars are carved and it's not something that I usually uh, look for in a guitar. But basically, yes, you should assess this situation well, long before you plan where the switches are going to go. So luckily, these switches are probably, they can, well, they're going to be up to fit, but I'm going to have to make them very shallow cavities uh, compared to the rest of them, which I obviously can make a lot of leeway. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just get a ridiculously sharp knife and uh, cut out the masking tape from all these cavities bits so that it doesn't clog up the router, and then we'll go outside and we'll start routing. It's going to be a fun day, and um, might actually get onto the pit, onto the electronics by the end of the day, which would be nice. Um, so yes, yeah, see you outside. Okay, so here we are routing in the lovely weather of outdoors. Um, uh, yes, I'll just quickly talk you through. Um, some of the things you want to think about at the beginning. So, first of all, here is our setup. We have two clamps, a guide. Uh, you can have a template as well, but I'm just using this uh, this uh, spirit level as a guide because it's got a really nice edge. If you're ever adjusting the router, don't have it plugged in. Um, always remember to take out this part, which goes in here when you undo this, otherwise you kill the router. Um, because you stop it from being able to rotate. Um, make sure you don't have any cables that are going to be a trip hazard. Remember to wear a mask, uh, eye protection and ear protection. Uh, yes. And, um, yeah, in terms of when you're setting up the router, what you want to do is um, if you see what we just come on, if you see there, the blade of the router is on the line and it's the blade is rotated so that it's the furthest it can be this way, so you're not going to go over the line. If you can see that, and then basically you'll use the the guide at the back to be able to slide along to where you need to be. Um, also, you want to set a depth so you don't go through the cavity and what you can do is um, 
if you have that ability on your router, um, what you can do is you can go down to the bottom of a cavity like that. Just bring the. It's probably easy to see on this side. Just bring the the router bit down like, to the bottom. Obviously, not that far on this guitar, but like um, here. Just bring it down. Then you set the depth on this uh, depth limiting screw, and then it means you won't route further than you intend to. Um, so at the moment I'm using a small router bit to do the edges. And what I'm going, what I'm aiming to do is I'm going to route here, 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 and here on four separate um, alignments of this jig. Then I'm going to get a bigger bit, and I'm just going to route out the middle freehand. It's probably the easiest way to do it. And then when it comes to doing this cavity, I'll probably start with a big bit and. Um, then do a small bit on the other side. But yeah, that's pretty much the intention, and I'll, I'll show you how it looks later and how to clear up afterwards. And uh, yes, cool. So time to route. Okay, another thing you want to remember to do is um, route in uh, very small increments, like maybe a millimeter. Otherwise, you'll end up burning the wood. Uh, that's just something we learned <laughs> while we were building the car. Um, but yes, we're out in small increments, like maybe a millimetre at a time, maybe two. Okay, so that's our first line done. Um, do the rest of them. And if, if I forgot to say it before, remember, if you're using a clamp, well, it, when you're using a guide, don't clamp it too hard, because otherwise you'll end up denting the guitar if, it's, if this is harder than that. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to set up, do the rest of them. And um, that's pretty much how you, how you route. Uh, this, um, the only other thing I'd say is when you set up a guide, make sure you're kicking into the ca uh, make sure the wall is on the outside of the cavity if you can, because uh, that means if you get any kick forward, it, it only um, kicks in straight back into the cavity. Um, that might not be possible on this one or this one, but um, yeah, that's generally how you do it. So um, yeah. Oh, also, if it wasn't already obvious, I've been sweeping away the uh, wood um, as it goes, and I'm just going to turn this upside down and bang it on the back. But um, yeah, just use like a soft bristle brush to um, sweep away any uh, sawdust that's getting in your way later, because otherwise it would just burn or just uh, obscure your vision. Okay, so this is an example of um, of a situation where you are routing with a kick outwards of the cavity as opposed to in, toward, in towards the cavity and um, the reason I'm doing this is because I can't actually clamp the guide on this side. Sometimes you can get a piece of wood that's the same but I don't have a piece of wood that's the same thickness as this so what I'm going to do this time is I'm operating on the other side of the router I'm applying a lot of pressure forward so that it doesn't kick back towards me and out of the cavity. Um, but yes, so that's two of the different types of routing, and there's the third one which is free routing, which I'll show you in a sec. And now for the final type of routing that we're going to do today, which is free routing. So I've put a, a clamp here just as a back, but basically now we'll slowly just go around the cavity with a big part. And remember, when changing a part, remember to take out this pin that stops it from rotating. Um, otherwise you'll break the router and also more importantly remember to reset the maximum depth because you don't know how um, long this part is relative to the other one so um, yeah make sure to reset the maximum depth and uh, yeah, then you're good to go and you just take it easy take it slow um, there's going to be kick off some of the parts so just, you've got to be very secure with the router on this but yeah, but this is a free routing section, and that pretty much covers the three different types of routing that are going to be used in this video. There's a lot more other types, like um, ones where you use uh, a bearing, or ones where you're doing um, like the curved edge around things. Um, but yeah, that's the routing, last of the routing that we're going to do today. So yeah. Ah, so the routing is done now, and uh, what I'm going to do now is just check that the pit guard fix, fits on nicely, 
and in the right place, and it does, which is beautiful. And um, I'm happy, very happy. Also, check out that weather outside. It's become beautiful. Um, anyway, yes, um, I'm just going to quickly show you the the aftercare for routing. Uh, so I'll just go back outside in a second. Okay, so as you can see, it's a beautiful day now, and it's just about lunchtime. So this took way less than the fit card did. Um, Yes, this is the aftercare sort of thing. So here's the all well, the cavities, and what you want to do is you want to just sandpaper a little bit in each of the bits that you routed just to smooth it off, and then afterwards get some garage roll, which is like kitchen paper but thick, well big, and a bit of white spirit, and you just go around all the cavities, um, to just clean off um, any dust, and then afterwards you seal it up with. Ron seal or something, but I'll do, I'll do that in the next little bit. Okay, so that's relatively cleaned, and now finally the last touch, which is you want to apply a little bit of varnish, Ron seal varnish or something. Does exactly what it's on the tin, uh, just to all the bits you've routed, just to protect the wood afterwards, and also make sure that uh, moisture can't get into the wood and stuff like that. But that's basically how you do a body, and. Um, We'll do an unwrapping later, um, but I'll do that once the run seal's dry, which will be in a few hours. Um, it'll be touch dry in 20 minutes, but yeah, I'll do it at the end. But in the meantime, I'm actually probably a day ahead of schedule, so I'm probably going to do some of the electronics. So, catch around. And there's the body. It's been drying all day, so we're going to unwrap it later. And uh, then we're going to jam this into it, which is the electronics. Um, it's all wired up. Um, I'll explain the wiring in a different vid. Um, there's a varitone and trouble bleed mod I'll play with later to try and get it exactly how I want it. So just what you've got to do is unwrap that and stick that in. Um, so uh, yeah, very very productive day, <laughs> all the woodwork, um, and effectively most of the electronics done, so that's pretty cute. Well, um, yeah, I guess this is me signing off for the moment, um, as you know I'll do another little, a little bit to show when that's all put together, uh, ciao for now. So there's the guitar. Uh, trick tip is you want to take the masking tape off as soon as you can, otherwise it goes all gummy underneath. Um, I would usually clean the guitar. As you can see, there's like little lion streaks of the uh, from the masking tape. I'd usually clean it, clean it at this stage, but since we've got this varitone uh, calibration to do, or playing around with to do, I've got some tape on the side to stop it scratching, and uh, so I'll do it. Later stage, so hopefully in the next next week we'll have this all wired up and put back together and uh, testing it out. Um, I'll do a little bit more in uh, after the Varitone segment about uh, cavity shielding and uh, making your pickguard all neat underneath. But, Pretty damn good weekend's worth of work. Saturday did the pit guard, Sunday did routing, and 90% of all the electronics, so yeah, we're on target. Oh, anyway, um, I'll probably cut this into two videos. One will be to do with wiring theory, which I'll record a lot of that at my flat. And, um, uh, with diagrams, and then uh, another one to do with what we did today, uh, with all the routing. So, good night. And, uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>